नमस्ते नमस्ते सो इट इज माय ग्रेट प्रिविलेज प्लेजर एंड ऑनर टू बी इन योर प्रेजेंस हिज होलीनेस द दलाई लामा एंड आई वांट टू टेक दिस ऑपर्चुनिटी टू एक्सप्रेस माय वेरी सिंसियर ग्रेटिट्यूड टू यू फॉर अग्रीइंग टू डू दिस कन्वर्सेशन आई आल्सो वांट टू एक्सप्रेस माय डीप ग्रेटिट्यूड टू योर टीम who has been organizing this con- this uh, whole event with our team to the digital team who has been in touch with our digital team satya gopinath das and others to make it happen so very very uh, grateful that uh, you have agreed to be a part of this uh, conversation okay we all are aware of the glorious position and stature of his holiness the the lai lama uh, okay absolutely sought after and most loved spiritual leader around the world his holiness the lai lama is an ambassador of peace of love of compassion of harmony of spirituality and the kind of impactful work that he has done around the world the kind of noble work that he has done around the world has obviously brought him the nobel peace prize in the year 1989 and also the very rare and very prestigious american congressional uh, gold medal there are so many awards and honors that his holiness has been uh, honored with and respected with but i think one of the greatest awards as all of us will vouch for is the love the respect the acceptance that he has received from the millions of his students followers disciples admirers all over the world so indeed we are very very fortunate to have him in our midst and especially here in india india is blessed that he has made his residence at, at dharmashala so very grateful his holiness that uh, you have given us this opportunity to converse with you and have this interaction and discussion mm-hmm. with you Uh, so also our best wishes and prayers which was your 85th birthday on the 6th of july such an auspicious occasion yeah. 85 years and what a beautiful journey of these 85 years it has been and i i always feel that we all are shaped by our education our training that we get obviously like you in your own monastery and your monastic life you may have had your teachers your gurus who gave you this teachings and your own experience your own wisdom but beyond what we receive in the monastic life i also feel that each individual in the world is very much shaped by what is pre monastic life which is very foundational one's upbringing one's cultural background one's traditions one's family one's community one's traditions how these impact an individual to be who he or she is today which is why often we say that values are not just taught but values are caught hmm? we catch those values as we grow right. up hmm? so so i wanted to begin this conversation this morning in india and different time zones different parts of the world but i wanted to begin this conversation as holiness by delving a little bit into your personal life if that's fine you know how was your upbringing what if there would be some values from your community or tradition in tibet your family your friends your culture that you were brought up in what would those few experiences be or something that very deeply impacted you and which has shaped you to be who you are today and what you do today for the world such amazing work and of course from what you learned in the monastery as well so i'd like to ask you <coughs> all of these upbringing in your personal life as a child was is responsible for who you are today right indeed uh, i am very happy great honor to see having a discussion with you one indian i may say typical indian <laughs> not court suit <laughs> traditional indian <laughs> yes <laughs> i often you see telling people and also uh-huh. because i feel 
the uh -huh. India, modern India, uh, too much emphasis about material value. Mm -hmm. uh, India, over 3,000 years, already talking ahimsa, karuna. That is India's tradition. Yeah. Uh, so now, modern Indian, uh, in a way, a little bit, uh, I said, they neglect these thousand year old India's, you see, uh, thought, India's tradition, mm -hmm. ahimsa, karuna. Uh, I myself, is a follower of Nalanda tradition. So all the Nalanda masters are Indian. Buddha himself, Indian. Mm. So Buddha learned uh, already sort of exist, sort of existing spiritual tradition in India. That is mm -hmm. Jainism and also, you see, uh, Sangha philosophy in these different sort of Indian philosophy, all carry the concept of ahimsa, karuna. And then uh, Buddha, one sort of unique thing, Buddha, you see, mentioned, oh, my follower, monks, uh, nuns, and so on, should not accept my teaching out of faith, mm -hmm. but rather uh, through sort of reasoning. Mm. Mm. So they eventually Nalanda institution developed. Mm. So Nalanda is something uh, culture center, not just monastery, but you see learning center. Right. So many, uh, many of Nalanda master. Uh, such as Nagarjuna, mm -hmm. uh, Arya Asanga, Buddha Palita, mm -hmm. and uh, Dignak, Dharmakirti, all these Nalanda masters. So there are very much sort of emphasis uh, what's it, the logical approach. So, like, so therefore, the uh, I feel, uh, so now, thousand year old India's tradition, these ahimsa uh, based on Corona is very much relevant to today's world. Yes, yes. A lot of problem which we are facing is, is it too much negative emotion. So the negative emotion uh, you see, they cannot reduce uh, just simply pray to God. The negative emotion must sort of say they, uh, reduce through reasoning. India's ahimsa, uh, why we need ahimsa? Uh, why we need uh, karuna? So for that, even you see, three thousand years old, already concept of shamatha, vipassana. Mm -hmm. These are sort of thinking, reasoning, vipassana, reasoning. Uh, shamatha, you see, as the, as the, focusing. Uh, try to increase ability of our mind. So usually our mind very much scattered. And then also, you see, uh, you know, chit, a sixth mind, mm -hmm. uh, senses of organs, uh, yeah. no ability to analyze, but only sixth mind. But in order to, to carry that, you see, you're, you should have some sort of experience. The, uh, I'll say the, uh, deep, some, some experience, deeper level of our mind. Then, analytical meditation, vipassana. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
So this uh, the India really have the great potential is it to educate people uh, in order to increase this uh, ability of our mind, you see, yeah. uh, through education, not through mm -hmm. prayer, not through faith, but through intelligence. Mm -hmm. Basically, all, uh, also the, uh, I, I may say, all sentient beings, and at least you see, a living being on this planet, you see, the very basis of survival is uh, loving kindness, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. including insects, birds, yes. other animals. You see, without their, uh, what's it, they, for example, birds or other animals, without their mother's affection, they cannot mm -hmm. survive. Then we human being also, you see, without mother's affection, we cannot survive. Yes. That is nothing to do with religion, but nature. Hmm? Right. Our life, you see, depends on compassion, karuna. The, so the concept of karuna, uh, all major religious tradition, in spite of different philosophy, but all carry the same message, message of love, Karuna. Yes. And different philosophy. Uh, theist, theistic religion, just a God, God. Uh, mm -hmm. So when they describe the nature of God, infinite love. Uh, mm -hmm. But in the theistic religion, there's not much philosophical thinking. Faith, faith. But now, this country, over 3,000 years, as I mentioned earlier, already, you see, utilize the uh, how to develop karuna and how to develop ahimsa. Uh, utilize uh, through shamatha and vipassana. So now vipassana is intellectual to thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, that, uh, that actually, peace, peace, the karuna and ahimsa is basis of mental peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, yeah. which emotion destroy peace of mind is anger okay. uh, and fear, jealousy. Yes. So, antidote of these destructive emotion is karuna ahimsa, these two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I always see uh, expressing the mm -hmm. modern India uh, should mm -hmm. sort of revive ancient Indian uh, knowledge, Indian thought, okay. combined with modern education. Mm -hmm. India have the ability and opportunity to combination modern education and uh, inner peace or education or knowledge about our mind. Yes. So modern education brings uh, sort of material facility and yeah. also uh, modern education uh, provide hygiene of physical yeah. Now that's not in, it, sort of sufficient. Now Indian okay. tradition is hygiene of emotion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that, you see, uh, we should, uh, we, we can combine these two things, taking care of our body and meantime taking care of our mind, not just yes. through faith, but analyze. Mm, firstly, full of knowledge about mind. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then you see how to uh, how 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 to keep peace of mind. So human intelligence, you see, utilize to develop inner peace. 
Yeah. Now, materialistic life, human intelligence, uh, most case utilized for material development. So therefore, now uh, I always uh, are talking about these India's thousand-year-old inner value. Mm -hmm. So usually mm -hmm. I describe myself as a messenger of Indian thought. Amazing. Huh? I always used to talk ahimsa, yeah. uh, karuna, yeah. uh, and also you see when I talk these things. Again, Indian tradition, secular, mm -hmm. not based on religion. Mm -hmm. Simply use our yes. mind, our intelligence, not talking about God, not talking about next life. Simply mm -hmm. how to carry day by day peaceful, uh, yeah. calm mind, like that. Yes. Yes. So now, India... Yes. Uh, Recent decades, uh, mm -hmm. I think India uh, also, you see, some way neglect these mm -hmm. thousand year old India's uh, knowledge about inner world. Yeah. Now, yeah. India, uh, this knowledge is your own knowledge. So, question of just revival. Uh, yes. Not introduce something new from outside. No. Your own thousand-year-old tradition, that should revive in education field. Few temples, you see, few monasteries are uh, uh, not sufficient. In education, mm -hmm. uh, should include uh, education about our inner world, a secular way. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So, uh, yes. That's my Beautiful idea. response, His Holiness. Yes, beautiful response. Thank you so much for bringing these uh, amazing points up uh, about firstly talking more than religion and more than faith, universal values. Yes, universal you are, value. You're really mentioning about universal values. That's right. Which, are, which have been a part of the tradition of India, which has been a part of the culture of India. True. And it is so crucial that we, as you very rightly pointed out, it is so very crucial that we revive those universal values, which are applicable at all times for all nationalities, for all people from all faiths, all genders, all socioeconomic statuses. Right. It's applicable to all. Hmm? You know, the mind right. is there with all. Right. The body is there with all. The spirit is there in all. And right. everybody has a life. Right, right. And and so beautifully you have put this principle, His Holiness, that we need to really be reviving these universal values and living by them in a very non-sectarian way, without any, without having a sectarian approach yes, yes. to these universal values. And, and the point that you were mentioning was also very beautiful, that we need to uh, bring this ancient wisdom this ancient values mm. in a very modern way, you know, in a, with the okay. modern education, as we oh. combine the two, that is when it becomes extremely appealing to the world, in the modern world. Right. It's not just faith, but it's a science. That's right. That's logic. Right. That's right. It's science. It's oh. logic. It's rational thinking. Uh, I, I often give this analogy that when sometimes you have a blind man and a lame man, a person who doesn't have legs and a person who doesn't have vision. And both of them are meant to cross the road. So when the, the lame person or the person who doesn't have legs is not able to walk, but the person who doesn't have eyes cannot see. So when the person who doesn't have legs picks up the person who doesn't have eyes on his shoulders, mm. then together the eyes gives the direction and the feet gives the movement. So modern education is like the feet, the facility, the technology, and ancient wisdom is like the vision. So when we combine the feet and the vision together, there is movement, there is progress, there is evolution. So thank you so much, His Holiness, for bringing this very uh, important point up that we need to combine the modern and the ancient mm -hmm. in a very non-sectarian way so that even a modern young person 
will be willing to accept these values and transform their lives so you made a very beautiful point which i want to bring up again as the next question that i want to ask you about you were talking about the mind hmm? negative emotions in the mind anger uh, jealousy envy insecurity so much unnecessary greed uh, so violent thoughts so much stress so you were talking about peace and be and you have been a great ambassador of world peace as well as you've been emphasizing a lot on peace and harmony so definitely uh, leaders around the world global leaders national leaders are meant to stop violent elements and protect people from violence but i don't think that the responsibility of peace is only up to the leaders the responsibility of peace is to every individual in the world every person has to be an ambassador of peace you've been voicing it so vocally correct but people have to take the response like i often say you know people who are not so evolved their thinking is if everyone can do it i can do it also if right. no one can do it then i should do it but people yes. who are not so evolved mm. they think if everyone can do it why should i do it and if no one can do it i cannot do it so we have to become responsible for bringing in peace so mahatma gandhi said that we have mm. to be the change we want to see in the world right. if we want to bring a change change must come from individuals and from within jesus christ said men or women must change before nations do nations are made of men and women communities are made of men and women the world is made of men and women society is made of men and women so until people change there's no question of bringing peace in the world so my question to you your excellency is uh, people today are so distraught there's so much at, their mind is so disturbed there's so much disturbance in the mind of people with negativity stress insecurity envy anger violent thoughts pressures so what would your advice be your holiness how would individuals make that change what would be the two three things you would tell them on a daily basis they should do in a way that they can be at peace and then be ambassadors of peace to their community and the world at large what should individuals do to practice peace in their daily life and deal with their negative emotions now uh since is our tradition indian tradition uh you see utilize vipassana analytical meditation analyze yeah. and also you see the indian tradition particularly the nalanda tradition everything analyze analyze mm-hmm. so we uh, fully utilize human intelligence human value is human compassion okay. then this human intelligence you see uh you see also the as it tell us the importance of compassion compassion itself the now animal there is compassion but they have no intelligence so simply biological factor that's all mm-hmm. we human being this special brain and utilize oh uh, now here uh, i want to to the so so therefore the now last uh, few decades i have serious discussion with modern scientist yes because our tradition is analytical meditation analyze analyze uh, <laughs> not just the faith so therefore uh, we have sort of serious discussion with modern scientist yes. mm-hmm. until uh, late 20th century the modern scientist they simply 
uh, concern about brain, mm. not mm. chit, mm. mind. Mm -hmm. Now, later part of 20th century, modern now scientist, great scientist, now accept beside this brain, there is something which can uh, has the effect of brain. Yeah. There are they, through their sort of experiment, people yeah. who have some deeper experience meditation. Mm -hmm. So while they meditate, they uh, investigate their brain uh, brain situation. So they found there is differences. So mm -hmm. now. Uh, modern scientists also now uh, accept the importance of mind and importance of compassion. Yes. Karuna, Karuna. Uh, like, like quantum physics. Quantum physics, you see, they make distinction, appearance and reality. Mm -hmm. Uh, all the negative emotion mm -hmm. entirely based on appearances. Mm -hmm. so, so something exists as appears. That's the basis of anger, hatred, fear. Mm -hmm. All the destructive emotion based on appearances. Mm. So now, uh, the uh, quantum physics, now this, uh, some of them, you see, say, uh, beside appearances, the appearances objectively exist. Yes. If you think deeper level, and mm. everything particle, oh, so not as appears. Yeah. Now some Chinese uh, student who study quantum physics, uh, mm -hmm. they some some of them use express. They, when they study quantum physics, then they develop you see conviction. Then yeah. you see the things appears, not grasping, as mm -hmm. objectively exist. Deeper level, nothing. Mm -hmm. So that's Indian tradition. Uh, shunyata. Shunyata. Nothing exists as appears. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all the negative emotion based on appearances. So mm -hmm. positive emotion, you see, based on reason. Like mm -hmm. Karuna, there is reason. We can meditate, we can increase through meditation, through training, yeah. through utilize our intelligence. Anger, all certain come very strong, but uh, since it's based on appearances, so mm -hmm. anger, we cannot meditate on anger. Mm -hmm. We can meditate on karuna, yeah. isn't it? Metri, karuna. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Negative emotion just come on the, on the basis of appearances. If you mm -hmm. analyze, think more, then uh, the strength of these destructive emotion gradually weaker, weaker, weaker. Mm -hmm. So now without talking about religion, how to mm -hmm. bring peace of mind. Yes. Now here, the quantum physics, their sort of view. Very useful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. so now this uh, Indian tradition, thousand year old Indian tradition, mm -hmm. now combined with modern science. Uh, yes. And then also some scientists say, we are social animal. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so any social animal, the sense mm -hmm. of concern of their community is by nature there because there sure. exist their existence based on depend on their community. So taking care about community 
uh, biologically, you see, there. Uh, nothing to do with religion. Now, since we also uh, social animal, so children, you see, as soon as they are born, you see, their life depends on their mother and the surrounding peace, the surroundings of the pe people yes. and community. Mm -hmm. So now, when we grown up, uh, you see, without much talking about these deeper value, mm -hmm. just intellectual and so the yeah. materialistic sort of thinking, education. Mm -hmm. I feel that is a mistake. Mm -hmm. When material education, you see, mm -hmm. uh, no mention about mind, about inner world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now, a uh, lot of world problem is due to emotion. For that, as I mentioned earlier, hygiene of emotion, very important. That India's tradition, only India's tradition can help there, can help that. Materialistic education, so no idea. Yes. So therefore, now India's thousand-year-old their tradition now mm -hmm. should be uh, also, uh, uh, should be uh, firstly within India these thousand-year-old India's sort of knowledge about mind uh, shamatha these mm -hmm. should should be part of our education. Sure. sure. So modern education in this country introduced by Britisher, they do not know. Or, mm -hmm. So now uh, we should revive in our education field, or uh, in school, from kindergarten level up to university level, yes. uh, should include uh, study, yes. knowledge about emotion, about how yes. to tackle our emotion. Sure. As, a, sure. as a part of uh, academic subject, not religious subject. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Religion is individual, uh, personal matter. Whether believer Correct. or non-believer, whether believe yes. uh, this religion, that religion, that is up to individual. Absolutely. But these things, uh, as a human being, how to build yes. healthy yes. human individual, a combination, healthy human community. Finally, seven, 7 billion human beings. Yes. With help of Indian education, in previous mm -hmm. century, Mahatma Gandhiji, you see, yeah. uh, show rest of the world ahimsa, non-violence. So South Africa and America and many people, yeah. really, you see, follow Mahatma Gandhiji's sort of uh, non-violence mm -hmm. thinking. Idea. Yeah. Yeah. So now here yes. today, uh, now this 21st century, I think India should should make more effort uh, in yes. education, how to bring inner peace. This yes. Is my, yes. Uh, this is my. Uh, yes. Th thank you so much, uh, uh, Your Holiness, for emphasizing so much on the the importance of Indian ancient wisdom and Indian sciences of the mind, beyond just the Indian science taking of, care of the body. Uh, mind. Uh, mind. The, no. Oh, yes. The body, beyond just caring for the body and materialism, but going right. beyond and care, maintaining the hygiene of our emotions. Right. It's like you rightly pointed, physical hygiene is important, hmm. but emotional hygiene is even more important hmm. because that's where we experience life. So very, very beautifully, you have emphasized on the importance of emotional hygiene, which is beyond any religion, yes. which is beyond any faith, again, as you uh, very rightly put. And you also emphasized on this aspect that these, these elements need to be a part of the modern education system. We have to start teaching these principles, these values, right from early childhood to uh, children in this country and around the world. 
and the latin word educare means to bring out it's not just Sorry. just knowing it, it is to we, we need to bring out that which is within us something that's within us to bring out hmm. is the origin of the word education latin it's educare bring out what is within you so so you have very beautifully emphasized on the importance of bringing these principles into the education system uh, regardless of religious faith right. now one thing that i want to bring up in this conversation is that the you've been emphasizing a lot on being uh, we we follow our respective faiths hmm. there may be somebody who is following uh buddhism somebody who is following hinduism somebody who may be following judaism somebody may be following sikhism somebody may be following jainism some of you may be following islam somebody may be following zoroastrianism so many faiths and each of the spaces a very individual personal journey right it is my journey as i i, I am a hindu i am a vaishnav hindu i practice the vaishnav side of hinduism so it's a very personal faith to me Uh, your holiness practices tibetan buddhism and it is a very personal faith to you and there are so many individuals in the world who are following their respective faiths and and evolving in their inner spiritual journey based on their faith my my sometimes i feel very disheartened sometimes i feel very sad to see the modern plight of the world today where we have become so strongly adherent to our personal faith that we have forgotten that there is a universal value of humanity we are a human race and your holiness has been speaking about compassion karuna again and again mm. constantly you have been emphasizing on the principle of karuna that we are meant to meant to practice compassion we are meant to practice kindness we are meant to practice love the purpose of all religion the that's, purpose that's of right. all religion and that's faith right. is compassion it right. is that's it right. is kindness it is love oh. but we have now become so so narrow minded and we think so much in part terms of our own faith that i don't know why we can't come together why can't we keep our philosophical differences aside and why can't we come together as one humanity you know and practice this essential principles coming from these cultures and traditions uh, sometimes i feel is it ego is it ego is it immature understanding of one's faith hmm. i i sometimes wonder your holiness why can't we come together and share one purpose one purpose regardless of our faith regardless of our religious practice one purpose we are a humanity 7 billion human beings we are meant to be compassionate kind loving to each other we are meant to be bringing the values of seva service to each other harmony and love so what do you think your holiness is stopping us what is holding us back why are we not as spiritual leaders religious leaders coming together with one purpose in mind and keep our individual faiths to ourselves what do you think your holiness would be the yes. solution to a problem like this one my commitment uh, is religious harmony yes uh, all major religious tradition yes. even within india in ancient time the as as i already mentioned the sangya philosophy and also yes. charvaka so uh, <laughs> this is different Uh, philosophical thinking uh, <laughs> but all carry message of karuna yes so now look today's world religion whether hindu christian judaism uh, muslim zoroastrian and all all these religion you see their essence is karuna yes love loving kindness yes. so all religion talking about loving kindness and with that a practice of forgiveness tolerance self discipline uh all religion you see carry that yes. and the, and for that 
utilized different philosophy. Uh, so uh, now we should look essence of all religion. Then you see Correct. same message. Uh, different philosophy is method to promote yes. that sort of deeper value. So those Christian, my, some of my friend, Christian, uh, mm -hmm. very sincere practice of loving kindness. Yes. Uh, and similarly, uh, some Muslims, uh, some uh, Jew, uh, Jews, uh, similar. Now, I have sort of full confidence religious <laughs> harmony is possible. Look, India. India is the example. Yes. All major world tradition live yes. in this country. Besides really? India's homegrown different religion, uh, yes. uh, uh, from outside, uh, Zorazodin, uh, Judaism, Christian, yes. uh, Muslim, all yes. now uh, it is settled here. So yeah. all world religion now live together. Yeah. Uh, and since, you see, thousand years, the India, all major religious tradition live together. So from childhood, people know there are different religious tradition. Yeah. So Indian Muslim and Muslim in uh, Muslim country, you see, yeah. the same religion. But Indian Muslim, you see, with the sort of knowledge, there are many religions. Yeah. So unlike Muslim country, just one religion. So this problem, you see, happen. And then within Muslim, Shia and the Sunni problem. Uh, India, you see, I never heard problem between Shia and the Sunni. Mm -hmm. So here, we already know there are different religious traditions. So that's personal business. And the society, since society, there are many uh, followers of different religious traditions. So yes. religion is personal matter. You see, uh, so India is the example that different religion can live together harmoniously. And, uh, and some sort of, in philosophical field, uh, some argument, it is within Buddhism, in Nalanda, you see, Chitta Mantra, at the, at the Madhimika, uh, in the Sudantic, all Buddhist, there's a lot of debate <laughs> in, in the philosophical field. Uh, so, in the philosophical fields, there is some discussions or uh, debate. Yes. It's okay. Yes. Uh, but Correct. faith, the essence of all this faith is Karuna, Karuna, yeah. and with that forgiveness, mm -hmm. and we and we human being, this human intelligence, we should be realistic. Uh, yes, emotion is part of our mind, but yes. we should think more realistic way. So then mm -hmm. there are many religious tradition, and yeah. all in spite of different philosophy all carry mm. same message like mm. that. So I think yes. India, India yes. is an example. So now yes. India is uh, still religious harmony there. Yeah. It's an example to the rest of the world. And especially the Indian Muslim, if they should make some effort uh, mm. to, to, to bring harmony among uh, Muslim countries, their Shia and the Sunni problem. Oh. So India's religious people uh, should be more active. Now, mm -hmm. uh, it is not time to just preserve our tradition mm -hmm. within our own mm -hmm. community. Now time mm -hmm. come, India's these uh, wonderful tradition now share, show the rest of the world. Yes. And particularly a country in the name of religion killing each other. So, uh, such such case, I think India, India's religious people, including Indian Muslim, should be active. Mm -hmm. Yes. So sometime, some, sometime back, I suggested uh, some 
my Muslim friend, uh, mm -hmm. mainly from Ladakh, uh, mm -hmm. Shia and Sunni, and we took some conference in Delhi, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. initiated by uh, Indian Muslim. So mm -hmm. some Muslim uh, countries, or say the scholars, such from Iran, uh, and mm -hmm. some Muslim countries so represent, representative. And uh, I think the mission uh, in mm -hmm. Muslim countries in Delhi, they also, you see, participate. Mm -hmm. So that's, I fully committed. Uh, so mm -hmm. like you, the Indian mm -hmm. now religious leader now mm -hmm. should be more active, you see, mm -hmm. to show uh, our neighbor in Afghanistan and, and Gaza, uh, Gaza, or Pakistan and, and this Gaza, or Muslim countries. I think uh, uh, we can do something. And yes. it is quite uh, relevant to this uh, situation. So we should uh, now, like, uh, like many, many religious people, or sitting meditation and also some mm. yoga practice. Uh, that's mm. good, but not sufficient. Now should mm. be uh, active to create religious harmony on this planet. Yes. And with that, uh, ultimately, uh, we all have the responsibility to, uh, to promote human loving kindness and ahimsa right. to seven billion human beings. Yes. That is, I think, India's, uh, that will be greatest contribution for, yes. uh, from this country to world peace. So sometimes... Thank you very much. You know, yeah, yeah, please. please. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I feel Mahatma Gandhiji, mm -hmm. uh, you see, he wonderful sort of pro also promote uh, mm -hmm. Ahimsa. He himself thoroughly practiced that. Wonderful. Yes. Uh, but his period, I think it mm -hmm. seems a li little bit, also, I think his uh, negligence about religious harmony, he should, mm -hmm. I think, make more effort and promotion of Ahimsa and Karuna mm -hmm. through education field. And Pandit Nehru, yes. more Englishman. <laughs> he much so, or should his lifestyle more English rather than Indian. Avama Gandhiji, you see, looks like a beggar, wonderful, really wonderful. But he should pay more attention about the, in India's education, should include some ancient Indian thought and should be part of Indian modern education. So now... Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, please, uh, you have your continuing, please. Huh? Sure. So now, uh, past is past, but mm -hmm. future not yet come. Mm -hmm. So our generation, we can make a uh, future. Mm -hmm. So with yeah. a wider perspective, long term sort of view we can we can uh, we can we can also we, we can make new future so india uh, over billion population uh, and then china also over billion population uh, traditionally uh, very close now today the geographically also now india and china most populated two nations. China yeah. uh, now today, I think, because of the greatest number of Buddhists, <laughs> around 400 million Buddhists now in China. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, besides some small, small political sort of uh, differences, otherwise, you see, mm -hmm. uh, there's no way uh, to or say they, uh, to become some uh, negative attitude to each other. 
you should sure. live side by side. There's no way. So uh, I often, you see, expressing, we really need mm -hmm. Hindi genie bye-bye. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> economically and for world peace and spiritually, India is the really ultimately guru of spiritual. So India now should take you see, that responsibility and create the bright future. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, thank you very much again, Your Excellency, for uh, emphasizing so much on looking at the essence and not being caught simply with the details. Uh, the details are our personal faiths. And every religious tradition, every spiritual tradition today has to focus on the essence. The methods may be different. Philosophically, there may be debate, but the purpose is one. Right. Compassion, right. kindness, love, service. Like when we want to come to the number 10, we can say five plus five is 10, or seven plus three is 10, or six plus four is 10, or one plus nine is 10. There are so many different ways to come to 10. And one particular individual may stick to five plus five and the other may stick to six plus four. But the end result we want to come to is 10. So truly uh, we need to seek that essence and whether whichever faith we are from, whichever tradition or whichever nation we are from, all of us as spiritual or religious leaders or those who represent spirituality or religion must now come together mm -hmm. and focus on this essence. And uh, you've been so much emphasizing on India being the uh, country which can lead this initiative. We can have our personal practices, but we have to come together to share now, mm. share and bring this to everybody in the world and bring this to humanity. So thank you very much. And you've not been, uh, you've been really emphatic about this throughout the conversation. I want to ask you one question, if you permit me, if probably yes. it's fine with you and if time yes. is not a restriction. Uh, I, I, I remember I had uh, interacted with you in an interfaith conference in Delhi. We were uh, sharing stage together and we were uh, discussing there. And the one thing that I saw, you were very busy. Uh, mm. you, were traveling, you were traveling so much before the lockdown began, extensive traveling, lecturing. Uh, even now you have a busy schedule doing online sessions. So you are a very busy person. You are a very deep person in your own spiritual practice. At the same time, I see you to be very humorous. You're very humorous. You're full of life. You are happy. You have an oceanic smile. When you smile, you smile from the core of your soul. You know, it's not like a plastic smile at all. You, your smile is radiant. You beam positivity, you know. And I see you are also, I, I, excuse me if I use this particular word, but you're also very naughty, your holiness. Sometimes you will hold someone's face and do this. Sometimes you'll pull someone's beard. Sometimes you'll just chuckle. Sometimes you have a lot of life in you, you know. So you have the childlike innocence. You have the childlike innocence, that innocent purity, that joy in you. Simultaneously, you also have depth. You have gravity. When you speak, you speak grave subjects. When you deal, you deal in a very childlike, innocent way with a lot of fun and humor. So I see that that childlike innocence is so much needed to experience joy. Simultaneously, gravity and seriousness mm -hmm. is so much required to do something substantial for the world. And in you, I see that balance of depth and gravity, but also simultaneously the childlike innocence, the childlike humor, the childlike smile. So right. how do you think people should find that balance? There should be mm. that childlike innocence, humor and fun, but there should also be depth and gravity. Because only if there's only gravity, then there is hard heartedness. And if there's only uh, uh, innocence and fun and humor, then it becomes not childlike. It becomes childishness or frivolousness. So how does one strike that balance? What is your experience? And what do you suggest? Uh, yes. 
And I think many years ago, uh, uh -huh. one occasion, my visit to London, England, uh -huh. London, uh, one tea party. Uh -huh. Then one old English gentleman is to come uh, towards me. And then he expressed, uh, he really, how say they, appreciate. I often say, I don't know. So then I felt, oh, Englishmen, I think they even do not know. They pretended uh -huh. they know. <laughs> uh -huh. so, uh, so honest, truthful is very important. Then mm. I think Tibetan, generally speaking, uh, mm -hmm. joyful, jovial, 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 Tibetan tradition. Yeah. Mm. Okay. okay. Oh. Uh, then also, you see, my practice, buddhicitta, altruism. Mm -hmm. You see, all sentient beings are my brothers, sisters. Yes. Uh, and within this world, within this world, seven billion human beings are tr truly our brothers, sisters. Uh, then, altruism is the uh, basis of happiness. Self-centered sort of attitude is the ultimate source of worry, anxiety, and then anger. So, the altruism is the, I think, the very basis of uh, all our positive mind, positive emotion. Anger is the basis of all destructive emotion. So, my daily practice, according to uh, Shivola, Shantadeva. Oh, Nalanda Master, Shantan, one of Master, Shantadeva. Mm -hmm. His book, I always, you see, often read and his sort of, the 10th chapter, his book, and the 6th chapter, and explain how destructive about anger. Mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. Then 8th chapter, altruism, and think more others' well-being than myself. Yeah. So yeah. that practice, oh, my main daily practice. Uh, mm -hmm. So that really gives me uh, say inner peace, inner yeah. peace. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, that book also is mentioned, your enemy or your troublemaker is the true teacher of your, your sort of practice, yeah. teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we need practice of uh, patience or mm -hmm. tolerance. That, you see, gives the opportunity, practice of these things by your enemy, not by friend, even not mm -hmm. by Buddha. So therefore, the uh, troublemaker for you is actually teacher of your practice. Mm -hmm. So instead of mm -hmm. anger, uh, should feel gratitude. Like that. So, this yeah. uh, my daily practice. Uh, okay. As soon as I wake up, uh, I always say, uh, uh, think or meditate about altruism, mm -hmm. buddhijitta, mm -hmm. uh, and combine with uh, the uh, now here, atma and anatma theory. You believe mm -hmm. atma. Mm -hmm. Buddhist believe anatma theory, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we both, you see, except we are here, uh, yes. uh, we need food, we need sleep, you see, mm -hmm. no differences, people who mm -hmm. believe anatma theory or atma theory. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but there is something, you see, the philosophical field. So therefore, yes. oh, we all, you see, practice karuna. Mm. Yes, yes. And karuna... again beautiful, yes. yes. Oh, oh. And the karuna, yeah. hmm, uh, 
with some effort day mm. by day month by month uh, year by year decade by decade then mm. you see your inner strength increasing yes yes thank Does you so in- much again your holiness for okay okay sorry sorry please please all this please. indian tradition yeah we really appreciate uh yes uh thousand year old indian tradition yes and 8th century tibetan emperor invited a nalanda master one nalanda master shanda rakshita mm-hmm. great scholar great logician mm-hmm. uh he introduced buddha dharma according nalanda tradition mm-hmm. tibet already have very close relation with chinese buddhist they mm-hmm. most cases they sort of emphasis uh, single pointed mind meditation but mm-hmm. nalanda meditation important but the but study analyze mm-hmm. analytical meditation mm-hmm. more important so we uh, since 8th century we follow the shanta rishitas or so the guidance study 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 Beautiful. Thank you so much again for this uh, profound insights that you've shared with us about uh, whether it's dealing with anger. Like many times they say anger is only one letter short of danger. You know, one letter added to anger and it's danger. So definitely it's very dangerous for our human emotions. And uh, you very beautifully also brought up the practice of altruism where we consider every human being and every species in the world as our brothers and our, uh, our sisters so it is very very beautiful that you brought up that as well and uh, the principle of uh, gratitude that we practice gratitude every morning we practice gratitude every morning we practice meditation and it is through this that we find that inner peace that inner uh, fulfillment in our journey and uh, regarding philosophy like you rightly said philosophically we may have our own philosophies and different traditions believe in different things but universally we have the same values and we focus on the same values right. so uh, definitely very very beautiful thank you for those uh, profound uh, insights i would like to ask you one uh, last question your holiness before we uh, conclude our conversation today and i'm so very grateful once again for your valuable time uh you have extended yourself to share with us your time and to share with us your heart and your experiences and your wisdom from your life uh, in your entire journey uh, you now 85 mm. still fit still very happy still going strong and spreading the message of karuna still spreading the message of love and seva still spreading the message of peace and harmony around the world uh, if there be three three very crucial and important lessons that you learned during your entire journey of 85 years mm. what would those three apart from karuna you you have emphasized on mm. karuna of course uh, apart from uh, gratitude and meditation apart from our spiritual practice which is all like the crux of it but apart from all of these if there be three very crucial lessons that three. life has taught so, uh, you oh. in your journey uh, what would those three lessons be what would those three experiences be which you would like to share with all who are watching us today and how can they implement these three principles or these three lessons in their lives so that would be something oh. that i would like to uh, yes. ask you uh, or oh, nalan one nalanda master i think around mm-hmm. 8th century the mm-hmm. shanta deva uh, mm-hmm. as i already mentioned see mm-hmm. one his verses if things is mm-hmm. it when we face some difficulties and mm-hmm. tragic situation then analyze whether that can overcome or not mm-hmm. through analyze if there is way to overcome then we must make effort mm. the, then it, 
to analyze or study the situation, no way to overcome, then no use to worry. Mm -hmm. yes. So that's, that's very good. You see, very, very good advice, yes. very practical, very yes. practical. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Now here, I want, I just also want, regarding education, now in this country, mm -hmm. the uh, combination ancient Indian uh, knowledge about how to tackle our emotion and then modern yes. education. For that, uh, I just felt the Delhi chief minister once uh, he invited me and we have some meeting. So mm -hmm. uh, he mentioned, uh, he very much was keen uh, in education, mm -hmm. more Karuna, Happiness. Mm -hmm. oh, ka. Happiness. Happiness. Oh. So yes. I think uh, the daily chief minister, he already, you see, expressed some interest about that. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. under his leadership and some appropriate occasion, some mm -hmm. uh, the, the chancellor, uh, mm -hmm. vice chancellor of different university of India uh, mm -hmm. and including like you, you see, uh, some uh, two, three days, some kind of seminar on how to uh, sort of develop in the education field combination, ancient Indian education about mind, emotion, yes. and modern education. Uh, I just to express that. So I have okay. no sort of ability, you see, to make some text, your text, no? So I think uh, Delhi Chief Minister, I think may go to go to, no? So I think when you uh, have also the opportunity to meet him, uh, yes. please convey. And perhaps I may also you see, uh, write a letter to him. Sure. Since sure. He, he already showing that. So yes. Delhi as a capital. So mm -hmm. uh, some new concept or new program in education, mm -hmm. in school, in college, yes. uh, about education, about inner value, and uh, these things, uh, and then eventually more Indian uh, education field, you see, can do that. Mm -hmm. that so, so that's uh, my request, my feeling. Yes, sure. uh, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, you brought out the importance of, uh, you quoted this text and said that, can I overcome this problem? I have the power to overcome, and if I can, I must do it. And if I can't, there's no point just worrying. So that was one of the lessons you shared with us, and also the importance of experiencing a happier life and how to integrate this within our education system. So very, very grateful again, His Holiness, for your very valuable time and your profound insights. Uh, we are very grateful that you've taken the time out to spend this time with us today and share your uh, wisdom, share your thoughts with us on a variety of subjects, whether it was religion or it was peace or it was education or whatever the subject may have been. You've given your thoughts and your insights and we are very grateful for your time. Grateful for all those who have been Thank watching you. us as well. And I'm sure the insights shared by His Holiness have benefited you in thinking in a fresher way and in transforming your life in a positive way. Once again, I express my pranams and my namaskar to you. Okay. And I express my profuse gratitude for your time and for your wisdom that you're sharing and the great work that you're doing in the world. As sure. you many times say, you're the son of India. Representing India, you go around mm -hmm. and you're sharing this tradition with the world. My, I express my deep gratitude and my pranams to you. Thank and you some, very much. Some scientists, uh, they... Uh, was telling me the global warming uh -huh. decade by decade increasing. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, after a few uh, decades global warming 
reach such a level, then mm. most of these river lakes mm. may mm. disappear. Yeah. So there's uh, uh, some scientists, some special scientists, now they say that. Then I felt, oh yes, now the whole world now facing some kind of uh, trouble which is beyond our control. Yeah. So next few decades, while we live uh, as before, uh, much better to live happily with a sense of brotherhood, sisterhood. Uh, the whole world, uh, uh, the present condition may not remain uh, much, much longer. So no use to quarrel, to killing each other. Thank you. 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 Thank you.